I don't think I've ever opened a challenge with a lean. I think you're overdoing the lean a little bit. You're like over leaning. I feel like it's like, I feel like it's the beginning of country file or something. It'd be like that on a, against the gate, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they'd wear, well, they wouldn't wear a Nike. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> they'd wear that, they wear that hat. The, the barber <laughs> hat would go down quite well on country file. Yeah. How do? They wouldn't say how do. The wood. Right, come on then, I've got the lean. I'm going off the lean, actually. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'm sticking with it. I've committed to it now. Okay. We're in deep. We're deep into the lean. I'm not pulling out now. I'm Mark Pitchers. Way to wear it. Tea drinking, caffeine intolerant, beard trimming, carp freak. I've been an angler for over 30 years and caught carp from waters far and wide, big and small. For me, it doesn't matter where, as long as the challenge is exciting and inspiring. But in this series, the target is out of my control. Three challenges will be put forward on Fox's Facebook page. Then it's up to you to have the final say on what mission I take on. I've faced some incredibly tough challenges so far. Have you been drinking de-icer again? Some of which I've smashed out the park. This one for the win. Others have dealt me a devastating blow. I literally have no words. But I'm still here and ready to pick up any gauntlet that is thrown down. This carp freak is not giving up without a fight. Yes! This is the challenge. What's up Carp Freaks and welcome to the challenge. This is challenge number 19. And as always, we put forward three suggestions for which you to vote on. No, that was not correct. For which, three suggestions. <coughs> for which you to vote on. That makes no sense. No sense. <laughs> we might put, put forward three suggestions for you to select. For you to cast your vote. For you to vote on. That's what I said. No, you said for which you to vote on. That doesn't make any sense. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> which is why I made the case. We put forward three suggestions for you to vote on. <laughs> <laughs> we put forward three suggestions for which you. No, no, Mark, no, no, just. No, it's the lean. The lean has completely <laughs> thrown me. Leading. We put forward three suggestions for you to vote on. And the winning suggestion uh, came in from Gareth Veer. And he says, Mark has to use entry level gear, the kind we all start with. He has a budget of £800 for everything. This must include his bait and his tickets for 48 hours. Um, a target of five carp, one of which must be over £20 and the others must all be double figure. So, that's the, the, winning, the winning challenge. Now for me, I feel perhaps the toughest part of this challenge is going to be catching the five carp needed, um, especially one over £20. Uh, we are, after all, just coming out of winter and the carp haven't properly woken up yet. So I've decided to come to a venue with great winter form and that's Welford Pool in the Cotswolds. Now, I've never fished this venue before, but it's a place I've known about for a long time and historically it does produce fish in the colder months. So what I'm going to do now is go for a lap, hopefully spot a few carpy signs or two and get this session underway. Logic meteor meteor meteorology meteor meteorologically it isn't what's the word meteor meteor meteorology meteorology meteor meteor no god meteorology meteor meteorology say it 
I, well, I don't even know what you're saying. Meteorolog meteorologically. Oh, yes, eh? <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to say. Meteor. Mete me Meteorology. Uh, meteorology. Ickle. Ickle. <laughs> <laughs> Meteorologically. Meteorologic. <laughs> Meteorologically. Meteoro no, meteorologically. Meet meteorologically. Meteor meteor meteorologically. Yes, it's Mete not spring. So yeah, meteorologically. <gasps> I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that. I don't think about so it. It's winter. It is still winter till next week. Yeah. For real. Little baby daffodils. Look at them. You never see baby ones, do you? Oh yes. That's a pretty sweet. No fishing sign. Right there, nice sort of homemade one. I do appreciate a good no fishing sign. Imagine your rods next to that. Well, no, I think the point is you don't put your rods next to it. Yeah, but rods next to a no fishing sign is Instagram gold. Is it? Yeah, instantly a million likes for that. Rods next to a no fishing sign. <laughs> a million likes. Instantly. <laughs> But it has to be the right no fishing sign. See, that's, that's got style, it's weathered in. See that one? That's not the right no fishing sign. Too new, it's not the one. I mean, it serves a purpose, obviously, but. <laughs> They're not really there for you to fish. Next yeah, but your rods wouldn't look right next to that one. <laughs> See, this is why I always take my own no fishing sign with me. You take your own Always. Rod. I've never seen you. Always do it. You've never had one. I've al I always have <laughs> a no fishing sign in the back of my van, ready just to put it in place, rods next to it, Instagram gold, I'm telling you. Fishing in places that are permitted to be fishing, but then adding your own no fishing sign to make it look like you shouldn't be there. Oh, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> why didn't I think of that? That's happening. That's happening. This, this, this session's already off to a winner. <laughs> so, you're, so you've got a sign? Yeah, I, I told you, I always have a no fishing sign in the back of my van, always. I, I don't know what's hard to understand about it. It's, well, I've never seen you with one. What do you think you're over there? Don't like it. There's a duck. Wherever there's a duck, I always go the opposite direction. That's, <laughs> my, that's my watercraft advice. Yeah? Yeah. Find the duck. Not this way. <laughs> Seeing as I didn't have a, any money in the budget to get a barra. So this is the peg that I've chosen. Now the pool itself is actually split into two main bodies of water and those are connected by this narrow cut through here. And for me, it's a really good interception point to pick off a carp or two as they move in between the two main bodies of water. Also, as you can probably tell, it's blowing an absolute gale at the moment. We've got Storm Gareth that's been blowing me off ever since we got here. And if I was a carp, I'd want to be sheltered away from that cold, stiff Gareth. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get a couple of rods in place. This is a race against the clock. So I want to get a couple of rods angling and then I'm going to go through the kit that I've managed to get for my £800 budget. So my plan for the start of this session was to concentrate around the cut through that joins the two main bodies of water. I thought this was a really good interception point. My plan was just to set a couple of traps by using uh, PVA bags of maggots and maggot hook baits. I'm sure there must, there must be carpy logs around here. 
I think that's someone's stepping stone, isn't it? So that it can climb over the fence. Is it on? Is it on? I can't quite get it. I'm sure we said it wasn't on, but... Too much of It's closed. Oh. I thought it was locked. <laughs> backrest. Carpy backrest. Our budget didn't allow for allow for my uh, extra bank sticks and rod rests. When I first heard this challenge, I thought that an £800 budget was very, very generous. I thought this was going to be an absolute double. But it turns out it's a lot harder than I first thought. All the little bits, it's amazing how much that they add up. Um, when I first started carp fishing, I'd already been fishing since the age of five. Uh, I went into carp fishing when I was 11 years old. And I could have gone down the Argos route getting all my, my carp gear that way but I didn't want to do that I, I mean I, I knew fishing was what I absolutely loved doing and I knew it wasn't something I was wanting to just sort of like dip my toe in the water see if I liked it I, I knew that carp fishing was what I wanted to do um, and I didn't want to go and get really cheap gear that I would then have to replace the following year I, I, I couldn't afford to do it that way I know it's it, it, it sounds funny saying it like that but I think buying that cheap gear is a false economy. Um, it isn't going to last. I was on the bank every weekend and I just didn't think it would last. So I went down the route of buying most of my kit from my local tackle shop and what I couldn't get, I got mail order. And I got the best stuff that my, my pocket money would allow. I would wash the cars and do the hoovering and anything really to get a couple of pound pocket money and then go in my local tackle shop and get my kit. So, and, and that's kind of what I've, I've done here. I haven't gone for the, the, the real sort of uh, bottom end budget tackle, if you like. I've gone for what I would have got, gone for uh, when I was starting up. So let's start with the rods. I've got the EOS 10 foot, three pound rods, which I've got second hand, 45 pound for a pair. And they came with uh, line clips too so but quite a bargain i felt there um the reels i've got the eos 10,000 fds and the retail price on them is uh, 49.99 each the micron mr plus alarms now i got them second hand as well but they didn't come with a remote so i got two alarms 40 quid i got the stealth uh, black label bobbins 13 pound each uh, and i've got a pair of the uh, black label bank six. I've got uh, 20 pounds, uh, Exocet Trans Khaki. There are cheaper lines. That is extravagant. Yes, extravagant I know, I, I know. I was just gonna say, there are cheaper lines out there. But for me, it, it is, it's the best line there is. It is so invisible, so supple, casts well, sinks well. Yeah, I could have got something way, way cheaper, but it's so important and I, I don't think there's a better line available and I wanted to use that and yeah it did eat into the budget quite a bit really I think it's 22 pound retail price we're away you're, your list has blown away my list doesn't matter about the list youth <sighs> well just before I sat down to talk about the kit I bought I just had a recast I just had a recast on one of the rods I wasn't quite happy with it and it's probably only been in the water about 20 minutes. And we are playing our first carp of the session. <laughs> this feels good. I feel even better if it goes in the net. These rods are lovely for playing fish on. They are so nice. I feel nervous. I've been on edge ever since we got here, really. You absolute dirt box. That's, that's, that's not what I wanted. That is not what I wanted. Oh, nice. 
nightmare. <laughs> when the hook pulled, you can imagine, I was absolutely devastated. Oh, what can I kick? <laughs> I, I tried to look on the positive side of things and think, well, look, I've had a bite really, really quickly. I'm sure it won't take long at all before, before something else happens. Right, it doesn't matter, let's get a rod back out there. There's no point dwelling on that. I feel pretty frustrated, really. I was feeling a little bit, a little bit down, like we haven't seen any signs of fish, nothing to go on. Feeling a little bit anxious. Because it's so windy, you, you can't really see a lot. You can't, it's not like you're gonna see any fizzing. And, yeah, I've not really had a lot to go on, so to get that bite after a after a recast, just over to an area where I had a bit of a, a bit of a hunch. I was like, yeah, that's the one. And then for that to happen. Don't think it was deserved, that one. Deserved. Well, I'm just about to recast the rod that I lost that fish on. And that bite came about by just casting a small golf ball size mesh PVA bag of maggots over to an area that I like the look of. I've not seen any signs of fish since I've been here. So in these sort of situations where, where you're not seeing fish and you don't really know where to start, then there's no point in committing bait to an area. Um, like I've done here, it's just a case of casting small PVA bags until you eventually find where the fish are. Um, I mean, at the moment, all my gear is still pretty much on the, on, the, on the trolley. I haven't totally committed to this peg yet. You never know, as we start to move into dusk, we could see a load of fish showing at the other end of the lake. So it's, it's no point, if you don't know where the fish are, no point committing to an area or to a swim. So anyway, let's get this back out there and hopefully we can uh, try and actually put one on the bank this time. Well, you're not going to believe it. I was just about to recast the margin rod over to where I just lost that fish from just a, a few moments ago. And that rod that I'd recast it's just rattled off. It's been in the water five minutes. <laughs> so that seems like it's the spot. It's a carp, which is a good start, really. <laughs> Ooh, it's wrapped around his fin. This is, now's my time. It's coming in backwards. It's not foul up, it's just, just caught around its peck. That's an unceremonious way to go in the net, isn't it? Yay! And there's the maggots in his mouth. Very nice. Right, what I'm going to do, seeing as that spot seems to be uh, the spot, I'm just going to leave him in the, in the margins for a second. Margins are plenty deep enough, about four foot deep straight down, so he'll be okay there for a minute or two. I'm just going to recast this rod that I was about to cast back out on that same that same spot. Could have it wrapped up by this time tomorrow. <laughs> you know how I said I've always got a no fishing sign in the back of the van for special occasions. Yeah. Well, this is a special occasion. And this is a no fish inside. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that is a belter. <laughs> Wrote in the blood of someone that was caught fishing and the no fishing. It's going in the catch shot, obviously. <laughs> caught from a no fishing area. It wasn't really, but you know, <laughs> you know. Fishing where you're not meant to be fishing, for some reason is carpy thing to do apparently don't approve it's not something i'd do at least i can pretend to do it nice. nice let's put it to use so there's my scales i bought i think i paid 
I think of four quid for my luggage scales. The way in um, one pound divisions and they go up to 56 pounds. So uh, there's no means of zero in them. So we'll just have to Basically, the sling doesn't weigh anything. In fact, it's not making any difference. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I mean, he is about 15, 16 pounds, but I'm not sure what these scales are going to say, but he is about 15, 16. Well, no, he's 16 plus, isn't it? So, frick me, my arm, arms aren't long enough. Oh no, that's about. Christ, you need a step ladder. It's just under 18, so it's about 17 pounds. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's about what we said, isn't it? So I think I need to shorten these uh I need to shorten these cords on this waist sling. Well what an absolutely amazing start. Well it could have been better, couldn't it really? I could have had two fish on the bank, but uh we won't dwell on that. We've got this really nice 17 pound ish mirror to uh, open our account and um, how good does it look next to this sign i feel like terry hearn guesting on the mirror <laughs> what a buzz <laughs> there you go mate The sling is still in the water from I was just letting that fish go. I've actually put two rods on that same spot. One has gone slightly to the right, about half a rod length. And it's, this, it's this, actually the same rod that's done this bite and the previous two bites. So it's weird, even though there's this rod just half a rod length away, it's still that one spot that's done the bites. In. Yeah, I think that one's tight. I'm not sure if that one's a double or not. I don't think he's a double. I don't think that one counts. Well, we'll weigh him first before I get too disappointed. Well, as I expected, he's um, he is short of the double figure mark. He's about, I think he's about seven seven pound. I think something like that. But like I said, it is very, very encouraging that we've had three bites so early on in the session. So I'm going to waste no time in slipping this fella back and uh, get another rod back on that same productive spot. Right, now that things have calmed down a bit, we've already talked about hardware so let's talk about sleeping arrangements. Well, I got a Warrior bed chair. It was 120 pounds. I could have got something a lot cheaper. I could have gone out and bought a, a sun lounger or something like that. But I do like comfort when I'm on the bank. I did have a budget that allowed me to get something like this. I want something that's, that's gonna last. So that's why I went for the, the Warrior bed chair. I got one of the uh, R-Series brollies. I knew on this session there was going to be strong winds and I wanted something that was going to stand up to that. And again, something that was going to uh, stand the test of time. I've got a sleeping bag and I got the Warrior sleeping bag. And I suppose I could have gone out and bought a second hand sleeping bag, but let's face it, nah, I'm not really, nah. If it's anything like my sleeping bag, then I wouldn't wish that on anyone, really. So, no, I wasn't gonna do that. A stove, uh, 20 pound, and the gas. Four quid for the, for the gas. Brand new kettle. That's kind of an extravagant purchase. I could have gone and got a, a, a cheaper one. I got the bucket for free. Maggot tubs for free from my friend Kaylee. Multi-purpose backlead. Zig aligners, foam, zig fishing hooks, boily stops, swivels, 
hooks for fishing on the bottom or pop-ups, that sort of thing. We've got lead clips, tail rubbers. I've gone for the Cortex Tungsten, fine hook silicon. Kaylee gave me some split shot, some scissors, zig line, baiting needle, a selection of leads. A sewing needle didn't cost anything, I nicked it from the Mrs. Sewing Kit. A PVA mesh system, Kaylee gave me a couple of catapults. When I was starting into carp fishing, my friends were giving me bits of kit that they didn't, they didn't need anymore. So I acquired a lot of stuff that way. A head torch, which is second hand, that cost me a fiver. Pop-ups. I'm counting these as costing nothing because the my pop-ups. Nah, you can't. I have made them. them. No. I, you well, can't I made them. Have, well, what, they're like six quid. Well, they're not in the shops, six. and I designed them. You're not going to start carp fishing and roll your own pop-ups straight away. They're my as yet unnamed. So they're your carp freak pop-ups. Pop-ups. Your carp freak pop-ups. Yes. So they're them. Pot of carp freaks, six pounds. Nothing. Well, we, well, they haven't got a retail price. Six so pounds. The more, well, you don't know that. No, All right, seven pounds, pounds knowing you. Well, <laughs> they haven't got a retail price, so at the moment it's zero. Kilo of live system boilies in one of my maggot tubs here, and that's been soaking in uh, bottled water and some amino blend 365, evaporated milk free, nicked out the cupboard at home, one tin of sweet corn, two pints of maggots. Going on to like the carp care equipment and what have you. Again, I could have got these things secondhand, but it wasn't the sort of thing I wanted to do. I, I don't know what sort of venues the nets and slings and mats and things like that have been used on before. So for me personally, I didn't want to risk any contamination so i got one of the eos landing nets um, i think my best purchase was the weighing scales which you've seen which cost four pounds yeah the, the mesh wasteling for the size of fish i need to catch the plastic challenge which is 20 pound plus then it's 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 adequate if we do catch anything bigger than sort of low 20s then i don't know i, I think i'll I, I think i'll get another sling from the van um, the unhooking mat. Now, I know I said I don't want to be buying second-hand carp gear, gear, but I actually did buy this mat second-hand off Harry. And I know Harry's caught next to nothing lately, uh, and this mat is uh, practically brand new, so I know it's had very little use. Uh, and he did me that for the bargain price of £20, I think it was. Very generous. It was very generous. Uh, and I did actually disinfect it uh, as well, just as a precaution not that it needed it. After all that, Mark did forget to mention the £40 for 48 hours at Welford Pools, which meant that the total at recommended retail price came to £892.26. Now all that brand new kit at full retail price would have meant I well exceeded my £800 budget, but I placed my order through one of the country's leading mail order specialists and with the discount that they offered, um, I was able to get everything I needed with change to spare. I think it was about £793 or some, something like that. So yeah, cash back came in under the budget. That's why mum's got to Iceland. That makes no <laughs> sense. <laughs> Does it really? <laughs> so. <laughs> there wasn't any way that I was gonna let Mark just fish normally with with the budget that he had for the whole session, that that wouldn't have been fun, would it? You got quite a lot of kit. Your rods and reels, I think, are really nice. All of that kit and your your brolly and your bed chair, you've done pretty well. Like now, you've just got your gear and it's just a normal fishing session now. It's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well. But I haven't had a bite for a while. So for easy. a what? Yeah, twenty minutes. Yeah. Twenty minutes. You haven't had a bite for. Every time you catch a fish, you have to give up 50 quid's worth of gear. Oh, controversial. I knew Harry was going to throw a spanner in the works. This was going to have a, a big impact. I knew that at some point, Mark was going to have to either get rid of kit that he absolutely needed to catch fish, or that was going to affect his sleeping pattern. And that was kind of what I was going for. It was going to have a serious effect on either my ability to catch carp or my ability to sleep comfortably. 
Okay, so I've managed to get rid of 50 quid worth of terminal tackle that I haven't used so far. Um, I've got some uh, back leads. Yeah, I did put a back lead on once and it made no difference, so I'm getting rid of them. I've got some leg clips, tail rubbers, swivels, zig aligner sleeves, zig hooks, some zig foam, boily stops, scissors. I'm hoping the ones in the van are half sharp. And then I've got uh, five leads, which comes to pretty much exactly 50 quid. So there you go. Just like that. Well, not long after it got dark, I received another tape. Had it on for about 10, 15 seconds. And then the hook pulls. Absolute devastation. Four bites he's had for one fish on the scoreboard. That is not a good return. Technically, he could have been one fish away from passing at that point. Power under this brolly. Give it a damn good go though. I mean, you know what I'm saying, don't you? I mean, you're hearing that, you're seeing it. I mean, you, you know, you know what it's all about, don't you? I mean, you do. Obviously, you do. Today hasn't really got off to the start I'd have liked. I mean, it could be a lot worse, but I've had I've hooked four fish. Landed two, and only one of them counts towards the challenge. Um, so yeah, I, I, going into tonight, I do feel a little bit on edge. I'd like to have a little bit more of a, a, a cushion. But um, speaking of cushions, I've left me pillows, I think. That's, uh, yeah, not having a pillow is, is going to be something. I'm going to miss as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, going into tonight, if, if I'd have gone into tonight with, with two fish under my belt, I would feel a lot happier. Um, and obviously now Harry's brought in this this, this, this new rule, which, I mean, I, I always knew there was going to be some sort of twist somewhere. Um, at the moment, the rule hasn't affected me a great deal. I've, I've given away all the end tackle that I can afford to, to, to be without. And I don't think that's going to affect my fishing greatly. Um, but things are, are really are going to get progressively harder as we go into this challenge. Because if I catch another fish, then it'll mean giving away kit that I either really need or really want so I, I'm already trying to weigh up what I can sacrifice and, and I am struggling I really am struggling but before that happens I need to catch another carp and right now I, I don't know where it's going to come from that open water spot seems to have dried up I've not really seen any any signs or heard any signs of, uh, of carp showing so, yeah, I am, I am feeling the pressure. Um, I think what I'm going to do right now, though, is, is, is reel in uh, one of the open water rods, go back down this margin, which I'm told is a, is a productive spot, and hopefully I'll be awoken up at some point during the night with a carp. The next morning, things hadn't exactly got any better. Woke up shortly after first light, no sign of anything feeding, not seeing any fish, and felt a little bit lost, to be honest. I didn't really know where the next bite was going to come from. 
I'm so cold. I'm tired. Oh. Because my budget didn't stretch to any fishing clothing, I'm, I'm, I am feeling the cold a bit. What would you like right now? Some salad pets and a, and a big warm jacket. I don't really have any non-fishing clothing. Okay. All, all my warm clothing is my fishing clothing. Yeah, I didn't have the best night's sleep either last night. As nice as the sleeping bag is, it, it is a summer sleeping bag. Yeah, I, I, did, I did feel the cold a couple of times when the wind started blowing under the brolly and, and showering, me, showering me with rain. Gareth's back today. He sort of relented a bit yesterday, but a bit of a, a bit of a lull. It went fairly calm, but uh, yeah, the, the wind's really picked up. It's, it's meant to rain all day today, and I need to uh, get my act together because nothing's happened through the night. In this day and age, I'd say it's a gender, gender, gender neutral storm, personally. I've never ever heard of a woman who Gareth. Hey, well, it's a 2019, you know, equality for for men and women. Anyone can be who, what they want to be. So to assume that Storm Gareth is a man is sexist. It's a gender neutral. It's a gender fluid Storm that can be whatever it wants to be. Gareth, can, it can be a man's name, it can be a woman's name. You see, what I didn't do was fall into the trap of assuming it was a he. I actually went with she first and then said, oh, he. So I, I assumed both genders. For all we know, Storm Gareth might not even identify as a Storm. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. What, what do you think Storm Gareth might identify as? I don't know, a nice sunny day. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, do you? <laughs> We're all calling him a storm and all that. He's like, I'm just, I'm all right. You don't know. Hi, po, hi, po. You start and then. I mean, straight in. Oh, no, now the wind's picked up. That's impossible. Oh, come on. Come off it! <laughs> that was poor. Well, well, what am I meant to do? It's. I think it was a damn good effort. You've used a whole. Hey, it was no, worth what's it. What happened to mine? It was Where worth it. Mine? Look at the froth on that. Yeah, it's frothy, but mine is empty. Like a cappuccino. So I spent pretty much the next, most of that next day, walking around, casting PV bags around. I think I moved swims three times. I wanna know you, I wanna show you, and I wanna give you everything you wanted. And I wanna see you, don't wanna leave you. I just wanna give you everything you dream, but. After the day before where I had them four bites in, in pretty quick succession, I couldn't believe it was, it was proven to be as difficult as it was. I think the most frustrating part of all this was just not seeing anything. We had seen the, the best part of absolutely nothing. Not a bubble, not a boil on the surface, nothing. I, I had literally nothing to go on. Today has been so frustrating. There's just been no signs at all to go on. Not seen any signs of fish whatsoever. Um, and I'm now in my third swim of the day, just trying to find where the fish are. Um, where I am at the moment is, is pretty much opposite 
where I, where I was uh, bivvied up for the night. And I'm fishing the same area where I've had, I've had my bites. But from this peg, it's literally just an underarm flick, which means a lot less disturbance. I can control the lead going in with a nice little plop. Um, and all I've done, I've just underarmed two rods, um, probably about a rod length apart, on that same sort of productive area. Uh, and because it's nice and short range, um, I'm just catapulting just a pinch of maggots over the top every sort of 10 minutes just to try and you know if that regular sort of trickle of maggots going in hopefully any passing fish will be attracted by that and maybe it's more encouraged to, to get the heads down and have a bit of a feed. Um, because I am fishing at short range I've got the lines slackened off um, and the Exocet main line does sink really, really well. So I've got the lines all nice and slack, the bobbins are hanging pretty much straight down the Exocet sink, so that'll be hugging the lake bed, keeping it all pinned down out of harm's way so it won't come into contact with the fish and risk spooking them. Um, now you, you may say, well, how are you going to get a drop back bite with the line being that slack? But it, it's one of the few occasions I will fish slack line is fishing that such short range. I mean the only way they are going to run is is out so the, the take will be a positive take regardless. Um, so yeah all I can do now is is just hope that that same productive time that we experienced yesterday will happen again today. We're about an hour away from that, that, that same productive period and um, Carp are creatures of habit, and um, I'm hoping to follow that same pattern. James and I had a, quite a good idea. It's something you don't really hear talked about nowadays, but it was night fishing. Back in the day, did you ever used to go night fishing? Like when did when did night fishing just become going carp fishing? Night fishing? Do you go night fishing? Hey mate, you all go night fishing. Yeah. <laughs> hey mate, you go f night fishing. I do. I f do you boiling? I f you boiling? <laughs> <laughs> Those were the days. See, normally it would be people I, I talk about fishing and they go, Really? Do, do, do you go night fishing? Like, yeah, I go night fishing. For really? Like, yeah, I do. <laughs> I was like a proper big deal because I went night fishing. Just night fishing with boilies. That's the one. And they used to always put them in the margins because in the, in the night, always go in the margins. If you fish past five yards, you'll never catch anything at night have to fish as close in as possible. And you used to use a starlight. You used to have starlights everywhere. <laughs> you used to just tape them to everything. You used to have that reflective tape on everything. It's like, like every 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 place six inches up be landing that pole. So I could grab it anywhere along the pole because I could see the pole. I'd have it all over my zips on everything. I'd have my sleeping bag. I'd have a foil blanket over me <laughs> to keep warm. Uh, and a tilly lantern next to the rods and another tilly lantern next to the bivvy and another tilly lantern. Just basically just tilly like, like a strip of tilly lanterns. That was a lot. You don't go night fishing I now. I haven't been night fishing since No, I haven't been night fishing since I was a kid. I just go fishing now. Day you call the song was big Well, right back at the very, very start of this challenge, before we'd even got up and running, I said that I feel the toughest part of this challenge will be catching five fish. And this session is panning out exactly the way I expected. I, I don't think it, the, the gear that I'm using, the tackle I'm using, it is, I feel it is totally irrelevant. It doesn't matter if I had the best kit money could buy, 
or budget tackle, it, it wouldn't have any influence. We've got I think less than 24 hours now of the session remaining, and I'm going to need to catch. I'm going to need to land four car. Bearing in mind my ratio at the moment isn't great, is it? You know, I've hooked four, landed two. It's not a great ratio, so let's just say I carry on with that same poor form. I need to, <laughs> I need to like hook another eight. <laughs> so, yeah, I am a bit down in the dumps. But the one thing that's keeping me going at the moment is just how quickly I got those bites yesterday. I had that flurry of activity, had three bites in, in, in no time at all. And I'm just hoping that the same thing happens again today. It's always the same, isn't it? <laughs> I, um, I just had to nip back to use the uh, on-site facilities and left Harry in charge of the rods. And uh, before I could uh, get settled into position, <laughs> I had a knock on the door and uh, yeah, I had to come running back. My heart's in my mouth having lost, having lost a couple of fish. My heart's pounding, it really is. I just want to see it go in that net. Lovely little fish that. That's if it does identify as a fish, of course. <laughs> In the net, yes! Oh, that is a relief. That is such a relief. Oh, he's nice. That's beautiful. Oh, I feel so relieved. It's been nearly 24 hours since we've had any sort of activity. And I was feeling pretty down. Right now I've just had a bit of a, a bit of a boost, which I, I desperately needed because morale was certainly very low. Well, this fish couldn't have come at a better time because, to be honest, I was starting to feel pretty miserable. I, I just couldn't see where that next bite was coming from. And, uh, well, as it happens, it came when I was just about to sit down on the toilet. That's when it came. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, and it cheered me up no end. So yeah, I feel, I feel now as though, although it's only one more fish and I still need another three, I, I suddenly feel very, very buoyant. And um, this is around the same time that I had them, them bites yesterday. And, and I just hope that the same is going to happen again today. You have to get rid of 50 quid's worth of gear. Oh yeah. I'm thinking, I've not used any boilies since I've been here. Boilies gone, what's that, 11, 9, 11.49? Yeah. The liquid, 11.99. Yeah. I need like another 25 quid. 26 quid. 25 quid. 26 quid. quid. Another 25 quid. Another 26 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This could be controversial. I can't believe I'm going to say it. My kettle. Your kettle? Yeah. Okay, it's up to you. Can I have my change though, please? No. We discussed this before. This no. is a crap rule. <laughs> it's 50 quid. I should have change left no, over. No change. That's shocked you, hasn't it? Not really. No? What are you gonna what are you gonna do next? Just drink your tea. You've got your kettle, your stuff. Okay, yeah, <laughs> but then what do you take away next? Oh. Uh, well then it gets tricky, doesn't it? Then it does get tricky. Dunno. I'll worry about that. If and when it happens. Thank you. 
So this is the rig that I've been using so far this session and as you can see it is so simple. Um, the hook link there is the £20 uh, Cortex tungsten and that goes down to a size 6 wide gape beak point barbless hook. Um, it's just tied with a knotless knot and I've got a little piece of fine hook silicon there to trap the hair against the, the shank and also act as a bit of a, a blowback rig. And then coming down from that on the hair, I've got a whittled down uh, pop-up, one of my own pop-ups there, whittled it down just to balance um, a bunch of about 10 maggots, which I've just tied onto the hair just by putting uh, the maggots onto uh, a piece of the zig and float line with a sewing needle and just tying them directly onto the loop. Uh, and that just critically balanced so the sink nice and slowly and then I've just been attaching a small mesh PVA bag of maggots. So yeah, as you can see, so, so simple. Uh, and yeah, it's managed to put three fish on the bank so far and another three would do very nicely. Well, after I had that fish, I, I thought it was going to be a repeat of what happened the day before where I had them uh, four bites in quick succession. I thought that was going to be it. Happy days. But it, it didn't turn out to be that case at all. Um, no, no more action came on that spot. So I decided to go back over to where I was bivvied up, put one rod back out there on that same little gravel mark. I'm really liking that rod. That could go that. Well, it's got a hook on it, so. Ah, bollocks. <laughs> Forgot to put one on. <laughs> <laughs> and also put one down the channel, which so far I've been baiting, but not actually been fishing. Um, so with the rod set, I decided to uh, order an Indian to uh, raise spirits in the camp. Um, do you, want, you don't want any rice on hand, do you? No. No, no thanks. Yeah, Wilford pulls the fishing lakes, yeah. Day you called, the sun was big and low to the ground. The cold, it froze my fingers tight. Time was still and I was lost from sight. So the next morning I woke up and nothing had happened again and I was now faced with the absolutely monumental task of needing to catch three carp, one of which being a 20 pounder, in the six hours of this session remaining. In, in my eyes I think at that point it was an impossibility. Bearing in mind in the previous 42 hours I'd only managed to put two carp on the scoreboard. So as far as I was concerned, this was, it was looking like it was well out of reach. But I wasn't going to give up. No. <laughs> Harry gave up. Oh, I gave up. You totally given up, hadn't you? Yeah, oh yeah. You'd gone. But there was hope because just while I was enjoying the first brew Harry had made me in about 12 hours, I saw a carp roll uh, in the next swim, just a couple of rod lengths from the bank underneath, a, underneath one of the overhanging trees, just flicked in, PVA bag of maggots. No, Mr. Swan, go away! <laughs> and 10 minutes later, off it rattled. They were shouting at me from in the toilet. I was shouting you from here. <laughs> Look at that. Is it a nice one? It is a nice one. It's a lovely, pretty, scaly double. Oh, I'm sorry I wasn't here to see it. Yes. Yes. He's lovely. I played it so gently as well. You must have been there for ages. No, I, I, feel, like, I feel like I've still got more to give. 
Really? Yeah. <laughs> I played it so gently, more, more out of nerves and wanting you to actually see it go in the net. More, more nerves than anything else. Oh, I'm buzzing. I'm absolutely buzzing. So basically what's just happened is um, a fish has just shown again over one of my rods. There's definitely a few fish down here. So I've moved down to this swim, seen a fish crash, cast a bag in the general area. Harry went to the toilet while he was there. The rod rattled off and we've got a scaly double in the net. And I've just seen another fish crash pretty much exactly where my right hand rod is. So it's, 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 we are running out of time, but there is time still. Or do I need two more fish? One has to be a 20. And again! Quick, yeah. we'll deal with this There's fish the here. Now. There's fish here. Right, okay. Let's, let's have a look at this and we'll get a rod back out on this spot. Have a look at that. That's an awesome scaly fish. 12, maybe 13 pounds. I'd have pushed that one. And it's certainly looking very encouraging, although there isn't much time with this challenge remaining. I've seen more fish in this past half hour than I have the previous 45 hours that I've been here. So I've not given up hope just yet. But right now I'm just pleased to have caught, to have caught this. It's a, it's a beautiful fish and uh, yeah, I'm pretty chuffed with that one. There you go. By 50 quid. I've tackled back my sleeping what? bag. <laughs> well, you don't need that now. Well, you knew when you set this silly little rule, I was going to have to give up my sleeping equipment at some point. And it's just unfortunate well, you for you that know. it happens after I've had two nights sleep. It would have been it would have been much better if he had caught that fish the night before. Then he would have had to give up his sleeping bag then. He would have been freezing cold, he would have been moaning, it would have been brilliant. In fact, if he had caught two fish the day before, it would have been even better. He would have been on the floor, we could have all had a good laugh at him. I guess I kind of, I, I felt like he would have caught that many fish by that point, and he hadn't. So that was quite annoying, very, very annoying for me. So yep, well, 50 quid. Yeah, but the only reason that that's happened is because you haven't been good enough to to, to, hey. catch, to catch the fish. It's, it's, it's all in the, the carp god's hands. <laughs> we are just yeah. pawns in their game. He'd obviously wanted me to sleep on the floor and be uncomfortable at some point during the session and, and, and that hadn't happened. Uh, but what he said next was, after my next fish, I had to sacrifice a piece of kit that was relatable to fishing um, a day session. Bed chair. No, nobody, no. And not a brolly either, not your shelter, okay. because it's not going to rain. Fine. Okay, well, let's get to that stage first. Last throw of the dice, this one, I think. A couple of hours left. So I'm going to go back to where I, I want to say where I was yesterday, but I was all over the place yesterday, wasn't I? Where you caught from yesterday. Where I caught from yesterday. And then that will probably be it unless something uh, presents itself, something reveals itself to me. Oh, the pressure, eh? So with three hours of the challenge remaining, I still needed two carp, one of which had to be a 20. And I decided to head over to where I'd ended up the day before, dropped two PVA bags of maggots um, onto that same little gravel strip. And I just hoped it was long enough time for me to try and pull this challenge out the bag. Well, after an hour and a half, I'd had no indications at all. Nothing 
to tell me that the fish were indeed in the area. No liners, no signs of life whatsoever. So I decided for the last hour and a bit of the challenge to head back to where I was plotted up. Um, I dropped one rod down the margin where I'd, I'd been flicking maggots for the full duration of the session really, just had a little pinch of maggots now and then. And the other rod I decided to fish on a, on a new spot that I'd been, been eyeing up, uh, tight to the far bank underneath the trees. I had nothing to lose, so it was worth a shout. I still hadn't given up. I just looked back to the, the, the very, very start of the session where I had them bites in such quick succession. That's right. There was always a chance that that could happen again, always a chance. Harry, however, had totally given up on me, completely given up. He was dead and buried. He'd moved back to the swim that he had caught nothing from the two nights previous. So I decided to put the drone up in a f***ing <laughs> hurricane. <laughs> he decided to go off and fly the drone in a hurricane. It was a little bit windy for my drone to cope it sort of blew away. He was gone, he was, he was out of the game. So it was all down to me. The margin rod, which had been in the water five minutes, rattled off. As I picked up the rod, I could feel the line going about round the back of something. It wasn't great and it just felt a little bit, a little bit solid. So I started to make my way down the margin to, to get the rod round the back of it. Unfortunately, as I was doing so, everything just went slack and, and it cut me off. And that, that was a sickening feeling. It was one of those losses that makes you feel physically sick. With an hour of the session remaining, less than an hour of the session remaining, I badly needed a fish. As I was sat there, re-tackling up that rod, the other rod that I cast over to the far margin, that ripped off. And as luck would have it, um, we had a new cameraman on hand at that point, seeing as Harry was off drone chasing. Richard was passing by. I, ju I just felt a massive, massive sense of relief. Sense of relief that I'd got another chance to redeem myself, and also a massive sense of relief we actually managed to get some footage of me playing it. And to see that fish go in the net, one that was obviously gonna count towards the challenge, I felt like a huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders. So there was now half an hour of this challenge remaining. But I still needed to catch one more carp and it had to be a 20 pounder. I had one rod that was out of action. So I quickly tackled that back up, uh, walked it down the margin with a PVA bag and maggots, dropped it in place. I think I probably had about a handful of maggots left. That was it. So I dumped them back over the spot, uh, walked the rod back and put it on the alarm. And no word of a lie, the rod that I just positioned after less than a minute rattled off. I called you when I got the drone and you were playing your, the last fish. Hey mate. Well, I've had, I had one which cut me off. I've got one in the net. I've lost one and I'm playing one as we speak. You're playing one now? Yeah. Right, playing it out a bit. We're coming now. Right, okay. <laughs> I could not believe it. I was absolutely shocked that it had kicked off like that. So jumped in the van, sped back and um, yeah, got to Mark when he was still bent into what looked like quite a good fish. I still abided to the rules as well. I had to sacrifice 50 quid worth of tackle. I left a rod to reel out of action. Well, basically there's a fish in the land in it and the rod's out of play. So I've, I've sacrificed that rod. <laughs> so yeah, I'm still within the, the, the parameters of the challenge, this fish. 
Ducks are 20. Ducks are 20. Do you want me to say it again? Just no, because I, I've, already, I've already been thinking it, but I didn't want to say it. It's solid, that, isn't it? How wide it is. Would help if that wasn't all caught up. That's a 20. That's a 20 for the win. 20 for the win. He's in. He's in. He's in the bag. He is in the bag. That is a chunky fish. I reckon that's scrape. I think that'll scrape. Well, it's only one way to find out. I'm not going to get carried away yet and start jumping around for joy. That is crazy. How has that happened? How has that happened? <laughs> If, if this is a pass, I, I will put this down right now as the greatest pass of all time. I, I do think it's wrong for people to compare me with Jesus, but I think that's the only comparison that can be made. Rising from the dead, when it seemed all was lost, and I walked away from the session feeling like Jesus. I was, I was absolutely buzzing. Can I borrow your hat? Wait, now you can't. Yeah, thank you. Oh, it's nice and warm. How come you haven't got a hat here? Have I not got a hat? You haven't got a hat. Your hair. Like it, it looks fantastic. It? I've got terrible hat hair, but yours looks great. I went, I went from feeling proper down. When Rich come by, I'd just been cut off by that fish. I was, I was suicidal when you come past, you know. I was, I was in the right mood. <laughs> So this is the first carp from that little flurry of activity just a short while ago. A lovely mirror of about maybe maybe 15 pounds. But um, we do have an even bigger one waiting in the net. This fish made it four double figure carp needed. All we need now is a 20 pounder to secure the win. And I'm hoping the one that's resting in the net is over that mark. It probably is a pound. Probably is a pound, you've. Yeah, take off a pound, yeah. Well, well, just, well, I reckon it's just under, it's like 12 ounce, take 14 ounces. We'll take off three, 12, 14 ounces, take yeah. Off we'll take off, yeah, 14 ounces. Yeah, 14 ounces, yeah. £21. It's saying £21. So it's £20. <laughs> well, it couldn't really be any tighter, could it? This whole challenge has been as tight as it could have possibly have been. So there we go. I feel quite smug at the moment, really. I did have a little bit of a uh, a nervy moment when I saw the scales settle on 21 pound. I had a feeling Harry was going to say, "Oh, it's not a clear enough margin" or something like that. I was waiting for, uh, I was waiting for Harry to sort of pipe up with something, but no, there it is, 20 pound exactly according to them scales, which I do think are a little bit um, under on their way, and I don't think they're very generous. Them scales it, holding this fish, I, I just said it feels closer to 21, but. Who am I to argue with a set of £3.99 spring balance scales? <laughs> but right now, I'm absolutely buzzing. I, I thought this challenge was way out of reach. I, I didn't think I could pass it when I woke up this morning. So to claw it back, like I have done, feels absolutely fantastic. So, all that's left for me to say is thank you very much for your challenge suggestion, Gareth Veer. But this one is a pass. Don't normally say it that way. I normally say, but challenge completed. completed. Yeah. But you've said it. But I've said, I've said it different. It's, 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 a, it's a, a new year, a new ending. And there we go. <laughs> so 
So that's the challenge done and dusted. And I would go as far as saying that is up there as being one of my best passes to date, if I do say so myself. <laughs> um, when I woke up this morning, I felt that this challenge was so far out of reach. And to then pass it in such emphatic style in the dying moments of this session feels absolutely fantastic. I am on such a high right now. And to celebrate that, I have decided to give away all the kit that was in my budget to one lucky viewer. Now, all you have to do to win that kit is simply subscribe to the Fox YouTube channel and my YouTube channel and answer this simple question in the comments section below. How many takes did I receive on this session? So that's how many fish did I actually hook on this session? Answer in the comments section below and we'll pick one correct answer, one lucky winner to win all that kit very soon. But in seriously, yeah, people should compare me with Jesus. <laughs> <laughs>